Hello and welcome to Efficient Cooking Without Humor, where we do what? Exactly, we cook German food. In today's episode we're gonna make a goulash, which is basically a stew or a ragu. Um, there are many different versions all over Germany, Austria, the Balkans and obviously Hungary where it originated. Uh, I'm gonna make my version of the goulash, which is heavily inspired by the Austrian version I learned at school. Um, it's a delicious dish, you can prepare it very very well and yeah, I would say we dive right into it and make it. Okay, so about the ingredients for our goulash. First things first, we're gonna need a lot of onions. They are basically one of the main ingredients, so don't skimp on them. Then we're gonna need beef. Um, I am using part of the upper leg of the beef, but you can use any beef that's good for braising. Uh, for example, chuck uh, is quite nice too, um, but this is what was uh, at the butcher shop. So available to me, so I took that. Then we're gonna need some stock. This is a, a browner fong. Uh, there is gonna be a video about how to make that stock, but just any rich beef stock, like a demi glass, is fine. Then we're gonna need salt and pepper, some oil, paprika powder, uh, sweet paprika powder is that, then some flour, tomato paste, bay leaf, and butter, as well as some sour cream for garnish. Okay, so we start the preparation of our goulash by peeling all the onions. As you can see, I have some red onions in there, which is kind of not wanted. Uh, I think the yellow onions are overall better, but I just didn't have enough onions left over, so I had to use some of those, of those red onions, yeah. Uh, anyway, I'm chopping the garlic first very finely. I'm gonna add that to the bowl. Don't worry about burning the garlic and the garlic becoming bitter and all that, that, that jazz you hear from other people, to be honest, if you're not burning your ingredients in general, garlic won't come bitter, become bitter and we are gonna fry off the onion later, uh, very, very low and slow, so don't worry about that, you can just throw it in all together. Uh, also, if you think about garlic and onion burning together, maybe you try googling sofrito, which is like an Italian way to prepare onions and garlic and you know, anyway. On to the meat. As you can see, I had a look on the meat and I cut off some of those really bloody parts. Other than that, uh, you should not cut off any fat whatsoever. Um, but I had a very large tendon in there, which I cut off as well. Yeah, Because that, however long you, you, you cook that, it was like a centimeter thick, it, it, it won't get soft. But any other fats, just keep them on. So yeah. I'm cutting off part here, yeah, on the top, and then I will divide uh, it into two pieces. Um, there are two muscles of the cuts the, of the cut that I have, and the, the grain of these two muscles were, was running into different directions. So it made sense to separate it along that muscle. But you know, you can just cut it into straight lines as well and, and don't worry too much about it because ultimately we are gonna cook it for so long that it's gonna be tender in any case, yeah. So for the size of your chunks, um, I like to go bigger here because for me goulash is not about cooking the meat, it's more about cooking the onions until they dissolve into the sauce and that can take quite a while and so we don't have dry meat we will cut it into fairly large chunks. As you can see, uh, this is about uh, four to five centimeter wide chunks. Uh, that's about two inches, I guess. So stick with that measurement, yeah? Um, anyway, we were gonna line up all our meat and then it's time to season it. Um, I'm first hitting it with some pepper here. Um, once that is done, we can add in, add some salt, yeah? Do season it fairly generously, um, yeah, just regular salt and pepper seasoning. Nothing else is really needed for this dish. In the end, we're gonna dust it with a little bit of flour, and I mean a little bit of flour. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of dusting with flour, but in this case, I like it because mostly it makes the consistency of the sauce a little bit finer. Anyway, we're gonna do the same thing on the second size, and then we, we mash it up good so the flour is, disper uh, is dispersed around the meat. Then we're gonna heat up a, a pot here, add in some canola oil, and we will fry off our meat until it is 
nice and golden brown. Re really take your time to fry off the meat properly. Not just so the meat has a nice color. Uh, as you can see, I'm checking here before I turned it around and then I'll fry off the other side and then took it out ultimately just to do it over again with the rest of the meat, yeah? It's not just important for the color of the meat, but also for the, the leftovers in the pan, that, that brown stuff on the, on, the, on the bottom, I think it's called font in English. Um, that's really what you want because that gives so much flavor for the sauce. Then we add in some butter and our onions, as you can see here. And then you really want to try to, to move the onions around and scrape off all that brown stuff we were talking about from the bottom of the pot uh, with the juice from the onions. Then we added some salt and we kept frying it. Um, in between it looked something like that. And this is when I like to add in my bay leaves and keep it frying together with the bay leaves just to activate the flavor. Um, after a little bit longer, I will add in my tomato paste and then I will fry off the onions together with the tomato paste for a while longer because that will take out some of that irony taste of the tomato paste and just make it overall a little bit less tart. And once it looks something like that, it is time to add in our paprika powder. For that, we will first turn off the stove and once there is no heat coming from the bottom, we stir in our tomato, uh, uh, our paprika powder. That is very important because otherwise it can turn bitter. Then we add back in our meat alongside with all those meat juices. Um, we can give it a quick stir here or just do what I did and add in our stock. Um, once we have added all that in, we can give it a stir and then just basically bring it to the boil and uh, cook it for about two to three hour or until the onions have dissolved. Okay guys, so here we have it. This is our goulash. As you can see, it has a beautiful color. The sauce is nice and rich and you can see no, no onions, you know, no solid onions left. It all dissolved into the sauce and it's just absolutely gorgeous. So we're gonna serve it up. What I'm serving the goulash with is a nice cucumber salad and a semmelknödel. If you're curious about how to make a semmelknödel, stay tuned or maybe I already posted it, who knows? I definitely have a recipe for it. Anyway, so we serve it up. Let's put on a couple of nice pieces of meat here. One, two, three, and you know, we are not in the German Democratic Republic, so I'm gonna serve a fourth one. There we go, beautiful. So here we go, beautiful, this is our goulash. And for the last touches, we're gonna add a nice dollop of sour cream on top. And just for the color and a little bit more of a sweet paprika powder. So that's it. This is our goulash, the Austrian style, the most classical way in my opinion. And I think it's time to have a taste test. Okay guys, here we have it. I show you again. This is our goulash and it looks amazing. Now it's time for me to give it a little bit of a taste test. Uh, let me just get a piece here. Okay, you can already tell the meat is gonna be amazing. Look, it just, it's just melting. Look at that. Look at that. This is the meat and I'm gonna take a little bit of the sauce, a little bit of the sour cream. Now I'll just try it. <laughs> okay. This is absolutely beautiful. It has such a nice savory taste from the, the meat, the beef we used and the stock, as well as this, this sweetness from the onions because we fried them so long. It is just so intense and absolutely gorgeous. And the sour cream, you know, it gives it a little bit of a tanginess and that freshness that you really need in this dish. It is absolutely amazing. And I tell you, please, please try this at home. It is amazing. You can prepare it ahead of time. 
You can serve it for friends, for large groups. It's not a big deal. It is so easy to make. It just takes a bit of preparation and really give this a shot. Please leave a comment, like, dislike, whatever you want. Uh, give me some feedback. I'm always happy to hear. In any case, thank you so much for watching and please subscribe if you're willing to. In any case, I see you next time uh, on you know, Cooking Without Humor. Bye bye und tschüss.